welcome to all of you in this particular session in this particular session we will start the new subject of electronics and communication branch which is a electronic devices so weightage of this subject in the gate exam is about 8 to 12 percent that means it's 100 marks are there 8 to 12 marks you will get from the electronic devices but this is not only the weightage of the electronic devices because if you want to score in the analog electronics you should be familiar with the electronic device components okay <clears throat> so ultimately this exam is very crucial to see the importance of this subject that means if you are not familiar with the devices that means the component how you can be familiar or you can be confident in the analog electronics because analog electronics nothing as a circuit part of the devices okay so i'm not going in the detail of consideration of the subjects i'm only interested in my electronic devices parts okay so firstly we will see how many what is the content of this electronic devices and how many number of lectures or number of hours we will spend here corresponding one to one and then I will come to the electronic devices. What is the meaning of each and every term here? And we will proceed into the devices. Okay. So firstly, I will say, tell you the total content of the electronic devices. So the first one will be semiconductor physics. Semiconductor physics. In the semiconductor physics, we will study plenty number of things. Okay. That means all the material properties, insulator, conductor, semiconductors, then energy band diagram formation, then P type, N type, what is the effect of the doping in the semiconductor, what is all other aspect of the devices. That means what will happen if I light will fall in the device and all all these physical situation which can change in the device we will study here only. That means what will happen if I will increase the temperature, what will happen if I will increase the doping, what will happen in the Fermi level, energy band diagram, all these things we will study the semiconductor physics. So this is a part of various subtopics. So I am writing only the broader part of that the first one will be energy band diagram this is the first one which is very important from the gate point of view then material properties these things can be suffered that means I will start from material properties, then I will go to the energy band diagram at the last. Then, bond model and energy band diagram is also known as band model. Okay, then in the material properties, bond model is studied, then we will study about semiconductor and the type of the semiconductors that means the classification classifications of the semiconductors this is my next point of interest as you will be familiar with the type of the semiconductors as well as the energy band diagram the corresponding to that particular semiconductor this part will be over from my side Okay, up to here we will consider all the quantum mechanical behavior in the energy band diagram because a lot of things will get involved whenever we we'll discuss about here. Okay, so we will try to understand the physics behind any particular phenomena in the semiconductor devices. Okay, that means that will we will study the things in the qualitative way as well as in the quantitative way. Qualitative way means what is happening physically inside the device. That means if I am saying that if I will increase the temperature, the conductivity of semiconductor will increase. Okay, so I know the quality of the semiconductor, how this thing is happening inside the device. But we are not able to ensure the number. 
if the number is increasing by which factor it will increase okay so whenever i am having only this type of information about the system that whether the value will increase or decrease this is only the qualitative model because i know the physics behind my answer that means if the value is increasing or decreasing why it is so but i cannot claim that value will increase by this much factor okay that is the meaning of the qualitative analysis but whenever you will able to ensure the number also that means if i will increase the volt uh, that temperature by 10 degree centigrade the current will increase by this much uh, this much ampere that means the current will get doubled or tripled or four times so whenever you have a mathematical expression also for that qualitative analysis that is known as a quantitative analysis quantitative analysis means numbers the mathematical expression you should be ready with okay so when your study will be perfect whenever you are familiar with the qualitative analysis of the device as well as you have the quantitative relation for justification of those qualitative models so that is why this energy band diagram is my quantitative model and this bond model is my qualitative model so we'll study about this in detail whenever we we'll discuss little bit later okay so semiconductor physics is my first topic okay and about to 30% of my time or not 30 so 20 to 30% time i will invest here only and this is a key point of my semiconductor physics or in the elect entire electronic devices if you are not familiar in this believe me you will face a difficulty in each and every further sections because i will take all the data of first lecture up to the last lecture okay i can use anything anyway so that is why that is a good thing or bad thing about my teaching that you cannot skip the parts so you will if you will skip that you will face the difficulty and you will pay off so this is my first topic now my second thing is single junction theory single junction theory or i can say the most familiar name of this is p n junction this is more familiar name of the p n junction okay so in this one we will see that we have studied about the extrinsic semiconductor of various type that means as a p type and n type i hope all of you are aware with that so what will happen if i will make a contact okay and we will see about this little bit later how these things are coming how will you will make the contact and all i am not interested on that at this time i am just overviewing the entire syllabus first so the first thing is junction formation of the junction so formation of the junction i will not tell like as you have studied till now the entire junction formation will go ahead with the energy band diagram so all the entire analysis whatever you will see that will go with the energy band diagram all the things then if the junction will get formed what are the basic electrical parameters that is the charge density then electric field then barrier potential depletion with depletion capacitance okay so this is the part that as you will make the junction what will happen over there without the application of any external field so this this is the thing as you will make the junction this thing will get appear there irrespective of your external voltages after this what will i do i will apply the dc that means the dc analysis
और डीसी एनालिसिस ऑल्सो नोन एज बाईसी वॉट विल हैपन इन द डिवाइस इफ आई विल प्रोवाइड द बाइसी एंड आई नो दैट टू टाइम ऑफ बाइसिंग विल बी देर forward and reverse and i will come to that why this name forward and reverse is coming up to now whatever we will study that will be a key point for my further devices because it is a simplest device which you can assume in any particular electronic subject it is a easiest device so we will see a lot of things here in the forward and reverse what is happening and because in the reverse you will study about the breakdowns why the current is saturating over there in the forward side you will say the current injection and all how the current is increasing exponentially all these things we will study at that time of forward and reverse bias i don't want to go in detail of this at this time okay so then you will study about the forward dynamic resistances dynamic capacitance that means diffusion capacitances all these things we will study here okay so we not have to worry about on those perspectives till now so this is the simplest device and what do the thing you are studying here these parameters each and every parameter we will see what is happen what will happen to these parameters in these biasing situations also so this is for unbiased case then i will discuss all the things with the biased case also but that will come one by one okay so this will be my next topic and again 20 to 30% i will spend here only 20 to 30% i will spend here now my next topic will be bipolar junction transistor bipolar junction transistor that means this part i will not tell directly firstly i will tell about the solid state triodes after that means what is the theory behind any type of transistor from where that concept is coming so firstly we will discuss about that how the transistor evolution has taken place then i will come to bjt and in the bjt discussion you will see that this is basically a back to back to pn junctions and one will be forward second will be forward one will be forward second will be reverse that means two junctions are there four combination will exist over there okay but if you are familiar with the principle of pn junction that means diode believe me you will never face any difficulty in the bjt because it is just the back to back junction theories okay so if you are familiar with the pn junction the bjt will become butter and cake for you and it will take very less time to understand the physics behind that okay so in the bjt you will study all the configurations and the current gains that means the common base common collector and common emitter Here, alpha, gamma, and beta. All these things we will study in detail at that time, but I am not discussing at this point. Then, in the BJT, we will study the base. That means whenever you will apply the DC analysis in this. In the DC analysis, you can provide the DC with respect to any terminals. that means now the configuration will also come that with the common base common collector and common emitter that is the meaning of the configuration and if you are dealing in any particular configuration in which mode that means in which biasing condition that is acting that is my point of interest that means now the next thing will be mode of operation Okay, so according to the biasing, you will decide the three mode of operation over here. The first one is active saturation, reverse active, and 
and the next one will be cut off. So up to now you will discuss about the DC analysis and after that we will see not entire part of the analysis in the AC. Only one part I will see here what will happen if the, some change will occur in the system and that is known as the base with modulation. Base with modulation. This is my point of interest over here. And that will be, and after that the breakdowns, breakdowns in BJT. These are the two practical appearances are there in the BJT. What will happen if you will apply a huge voltage in the reverse side or what will happen is some change will occur in the system. So this is my, but it will take very less time because all these configurations are depending on the diode only. And all the information about the biasing, how the diode will react in the forward bias, how the diode will react in the reverse bias, all the things, you are familiar now. So this will take very less amount of time. That is why only 10 to 20 percent time you have to spend over here. Only 10 to 20, 20 percent. And believe me, within three hours you will complete this. Okay? This is my third topic. My next thing will be, next topic will be mass capacitor. And MOSFET. Nowadays, in the gate exam, the mass capacitor is a boom topic. In each and every year, you will see at least one question from the mass cap only. Because for me, MOSFET is nothing just the extension of the mass capacitor. If you are familiar with the mass capacitor, the understanding of the MOSFET will become very easy for you. Just like as that, that if you are familiar with the PN junction, the BJT will become very easy for you. Similarly, if you are familiar with the MOS capacitor, the MOSFET will become very easy for you. JFET is not in the syllabus now, that is why I am not going in the detail of that JFET. Only I am interested in the MOS capacitor as well as the MOSFET. Okay, so I will spend, if I will take it as 100%, I will spend 70% time in the MOS capacitor and only 30% time in the MOSFET. Because MOSFET is nothing just the extension of the MOS cap. So all the physics behind the MOSFET I will develop in the MOS cap. All the physics behind my MOSFET I will discuss in the MOS cap. And at the time of discussion you will see that. So here also you will study various modes. Okay. So firstly I will discuss about the surface potential. And with the surface potential, various modes we will study. That means the accumulation. Depletion. Inversion. And a strong inversion. Okay, these are my, the part of the surface potential. Then after that, you will study the capacitance model. Okay, so these are my two things. In the capacitance model, you will study first the CV curve and the total capacitance. These are my two points of interest in the mass cap. Okay, and here, whenever I will start the MOSFET after this, the first thing will be the current situations, currents, okay. Then in the current I will see the effect of all other aspects, then here one more thing will come, body effect, I am not going in detail because I will go with several, with several steps from mass capacitor to MOSFET. 
Firstly, I will provide the three terminal mass, then I will go to the four terminal mass. So that is my point of interest whenever I discuss about that. At that time, I will tell what is the evolution of the MOSFET from mass capacitor to MOSFET. So then after that, you will see the modes of operation. Then again, I will get three. The first one is cutoff, then triode, and then saturation. So all these things, whatever you study here, this is a DC analysis. But as I will provide the AC, some other things will come which we will discuss at that time. Because in the AC analysis, one more important parameter will come, channel length modulation. channel length modulation and about those things we will discuss at that time only. So here again I will provide 20 to 30 percent of time. Okay. And so it may possible that 25 it will be. So three topics 25, 25, 25. One will take about to 15 and remaining 10 you will get from the next topic which is my VLSI fabrications. The next thing is VLSI fabrication because up to now you will study how the device will react if I provide this much voltage, this much effect will occur in the device and the hole will move in this side, the electron will move in this side, electric field profile will be like this. That means up to now you have studied if you have the device how it will react. But now this is the key from where you will get the device. That means how you will fabricate the device in the physical situations. Okay, so that is why it is a VLSI fabrications. So how many steps are involved and it is so much sophisticated process. Okay, that how you will get any particular transistor in the physical reality which you are testing in the labs. So I am only giving the names which you will use frequently. That means the wafer preparation, or it is also known as crystal growth, then epitaxy, then oxidation, then Photolithography, then etching, then deposition, then passivation, or before passivation, one thing is there metallization. then passivation and at last you will get the packaging. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. One process I skipped from here which is I hope so at the time of device formation, we'll, whenever we will discuss, that will come automatically, if I will go there. 
So this is the total architecture of the EDC or electronic devices which we will study in this particular course, in this particular session. Okay, so I hope all of you or most of you are familiar with this, but my flow will be like this as I have discussed. So we will start with the basic atomic structure of the device which is my first topic, semiconductor physics. So in the semiconductor physics, we will discuss all the type of structures, all the type of materials and all. And then we will go towards the devices. Okay. So the, my first part is only to learn about the materials. So my first topic is semiconductor physics. My first topic is semiconductor physics, where I'm interested in. So we will study about the electronic first. So what do you mean by electronics? Okay, so firstly, if anybody will ask, you are an electronic engineer, what is the meaning of the electronics? So a lot of people are saying that the subject where we are discussing about the movement of the electrons is known as electronics. Yes or no? If that is the electronics, then what is electrical engineering? What do you mean by electrical? Because in, le in electrical also we are studying the same thing. Movement of the electrons. So definitely there is some deficiency in this particular definition of the electronics because for me the electronic is a subject where we are discussing about the properties and the classification of the semiconductors okay whenever you are discussing about the semiconductors that is the electronics but if you are interested in the conductors then that is the electrical okay so whenever we are interested in the behavior of the semiconductors, then that branch of the physics is known as electronics. That means electronic is a branch of physics where we are discussing the properties and behavior of the semiconductors. Okay? And electrical is a branch of physics where we are discussing about the properties and behavior of the conductors. And it may be possible that in uh, nowadays they are trying to merge. Okay. That in some electrical application they are trying to use the semiconductor devices. That is why you are getting the high power devices nowadays. Okay. So, but broader classification of the electrical and ele electronics you can do like this. Okay. So, branch of physics where we, where we are discussing about the semiconductors is known as electronics. Or a lot of people can say 
that electrical means high voltage applications, electronics means low voltage applications. This is not true nowadays. Because you can have the electronic components which are working in the high voltages also. Just like as a hemp. Hemp is a device which will operate for higher voltages also. So that is not a scenario that low voltage means electronics, high voltage means. But most of the time in the normal scenario you will see that that electronics is operating in the low voltage. It is not necessary all the time. Okay, <clears throat> the range of electronic devices are very vast. So, firstly I should know if I am interested in any particular device from where the device you are making them. Okay, that means what is the combination of that particular device, whatever you are studying here. So first thing is the structure of that. So I am interested in atomic structure first. How my atomic structure will look like, where I am interested in the first one. So atomic structure, if I am interested in what is the the smallest unit atom. So what do you mean by atom? So atom is basically a smallest unit of the universe which can exist freely and stable. That means a lot of people can say the electron or proton or neutron. Electron is much lighter than the atom. But electron cannot be stable. Electron will revolve all the time. It will move. That will never acquire the stability. Okay. So, atom is the smallest unit which can be free as well as stable. Okay. And we are familiar with the atom, atomic structure of any particular material in class 11th chemistry or class 9th I hope. First time we have seen about the atom. What is the meaning of the atom? Okay, so we know that in the atom, proton and neutron will exist at the nucleus, and remaining electronic cloud you will get outside of this. Okay, so Bohr have provided the electronic distribution model. So I'm not going in detail of that because that is not my point of interest at this point. So one, two. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then similarly, 8 will be here also. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. But actual picture will not be like this. It is basically a 2D representation of that. Just like a solar cell. Sorry, not solar system. We have our own solar system. And we know that. If it is a sun, the earth is not revolving like this. Earth is not revolving like this, it is, if it is a circle. The revolution of the earth is just like this, if it is a sun. So if the earth will be here, you are getting colder, that means the winter season, whenever the earth will be here, you will get the summer season. Okay, so my point of interest is, why we are going like this? Actually, this revolution is in 3D. That means if this is a, my nucleus, electron can, some of the electron can move like this, some of the electron can move like this. So it's very difficult to show the movement of each and every electron exclusively in 3D. Okay, that will be easy only with the animation, not with the pictures. That is why in each and every book, you are getting this type of 2D representations. Okay, 3D representation is very difficult to show in the boards. Okay, in 2D you cannot represent that. So actual representation is not like this. It is a only 2D representation. So my main point of interest is the total mass of the device of this particular atom will be decided by the nucleus. That means if I will, I am interested in the mass. Mass will be decided by the proton plus neutrons.
and the total charge will be decided by the protons plus electrons. That means these two are responsible for the total mass because we know that the electron is very light with respect to my protons and neutrons. Okay, and the total charge will be decided by proton and electron. So if I am saying that this is having the E electron, it will have the minus E electron. And we know that the electronic charge is nothing. 1.6 into 10 to minus 19 coulombs. And the charge on the electron will be minus 1.6 into 10 to minus 19 coulombs. Okay. So, but it, the mass is very less. So I am not interested in that. What is the mass of the proton? Mass of the proton is 1.6 into 10 to minus 27 kg. And the mass of the electron is 9.1 into 10 to minus 31. That means this is 10,000 times lesser than this. That is why we are not taking the electron consideration in the mass. Okay? But I know that the atoms are electrically neutral. So this neutron will never participate in the conduction or any particular charge distributions. In the charge distribution only the proton and electron will participate. So this is a basic atomic structure of any particular material. Any particular, whether that is a gas or nuclear, or sorry, gas or solid or liquid, whatever the thing. Okay. Now, this is my first thing where I am interested in. That means atomic structure. Any atom will look like this. Neutron, proton, electron, these are the three major contribution of any particular atom which will exist. Now, after that I want to know, you have studied about the atom. Now I want to know, how are those atoms are packed? That means, what is the force between the two atoms? If the force is very high, those two atoms will be tied together. And if they are very much packed, the structure will be fixed. Yes or no? But if they, those atoms are a little bit nearer and the bonding is not that much great between the two atoms, what will happen? They can move. They can be modulated. Yes or no? But if they are very far away and the bonding is very loose between the two atoms, one can go here and one can go there. Yes or no? That means my next interest is the total possible states of the material. total state of the materials and I know whenever the packing density is very high of any particular material packing density is very high that means atoms are very closely to each other so definitely that will acquire some fixed shape which is known as solid second one where not that much Density is there, that means the little slow, little less so, uh, body is there between the atoms. That means they are not that much tightly packed. That they can move somewhere. Okay, that means that, that is a modulated. That is known as a liquid. And the third one where the bonding between the atoms is very less. That means no atomic force between the two atoms that can move anywhere, that is known as the gas. Okay, so first one is solid, second one is liquid and third one is gas. Nowadays, one more category is present which is between the solid and gas. 
okay and that is known as the plasma or gel this is my modern day is one more state which scientists has defined which is a plasma that means ionized gases basically okay but all the semiconductors where i am interested in these are the solids that is why sometimes semiconductor physics is also known as solid state devices that electronic devices are also known as solid state devices because all the semiconductor whatever you are studying in this particular course those are in solids so i am not interested in the liquid gas and plasma i just want to know solid okay so tell me what are the types of the solid so i know that atoms are tightly packed that means the bond that strength or the attraction force between the two atoms are very high okay and they will acquire a fixed shape you cannot change the shape until you are not providing any deformation in the that particular solid so until you are not providing any external force you cannot change the shape if you will leave that that will be at the fixed shape but in the gas what will happen if you leave the gas that will spread out similarly if you will fall that water in the flow that will also get spread but not in the solid if you will put the solid in any particular medium until you are not pressuring that you will pressurize that definitely that will get deformed but until you are not providing any external force that shape will be fixed but i know that what is a solid solid means the arrangement of the atoms which are very tightly packed now that arrangement is proper or not that is my point of interest that means if those atoms are well arranged in the in that particular solid that means whatever atoms are there that is a well arranged then that type of solids are known as the crystalline solid or that type of structure is known as a crystalline structure okay and the solid where elect uh, where the atom can randomly sit anywhere no any periodic or no any well standard variation of those atoms that means any atom can exist anywhere any periodicity is not there any reference model is not there to define the places of the atoms then that is known as amorphous okay that means if i am having this any atom can sit anywhere no any periodicity or something then that is the amorphous that means just you have packed any particular solid with the atoms and the force is very high that is why the shape is not changing so it is a solid but crystal like if you will see how the arrangements of the atoms are going on here that will be random any atom can exist anywhere now the next thing is i am having a solid here also the packing density is very high but at this time atom cannot sit here randomly in each and every place the atom is here okay at each and every place the atom can exist here so in the through the crystal my is atomic structure is same okay my crystalline structure is same so this type of crystalline structure is known as the single crystalline it is a single crystalline structure but if i am having any particular solid i am having i have divided this into the several parts because of some manufacturing defect or because of any other factor in the physical scenario i am saying that the arrangement of atoms are not random but arrangement of the atoms are not 
proper also throughout the device. That means if I want to show it is the region 1, it is the region 2, region 3, region 4 and region 5. That means this is my region 1 and separating all the regions. That means in this region the atoms are in a proper manner. In this region also the arrangement of the atoms are in proper manner in this also, in this also, in this also. But if you will see throughout the material, it is not proper manner. That is why you can say that in the same solid, various type of crystalline structure are existing. So this type of solids are known as the polycrystalline. Various type of say, crystalline structure can exist in the same device or in the same solid structure. So what is my point of view test here? I want always my semiconductor should be like this. This is a 100% pure crystalline structure which I want always for the devices. But it's very difficult to acquire a solid which will be a single crystalline throughout the bar. Okay, so this is my ideal structure. But what is the practical structure? This. It is crystalline in nature but in the throughout the solid the crystalline structure will not be same. So even the structure is not single crystalline, we will take assumptions that the system, this solid is single crystalline because if you will take this, only one approximation is valid, that means I will analyze from here to here with the same physics. But if I take this, I have to segregate the regions according to my crystalline structure and I have to do the analysis five times because the five times of crystalline structure are existing. So that is why most of the time in this course, we will not discuss about the polycrystallines. If we are saying that the solid is crystalline, definitely we will take the single crystalline structure. Because the analysis of the single crystalline structure are much easier than this. So up to now we have studied about the atomic structure, electron, neutron, proton and how those atoms are arranged in the material as well as the states of the devices. So now I want to know bondings in the material or bondings of electron to the nucleus. So types of bonding. So please make sure that this bonding is not between the atoms, that means the force between the atom to atom. No. The bonding between the electron to electron. How those electrons are getting shared. Okay? That means if one atom is coming closer to any other atom, how those electrons are getting shared? Or how those electrons or those atoms are interacting between the each other. So I know that several types of bonding we have studied in class 11th. So first one is metallic bonding. Then covalent bonding. Then ionic bonding. That means if I am if I am adding the two different type of atoms or same type of atoms, how those electrons are bounded in the total nucleus. That is my point of interest. If I will make any one nucleus with the combination of several atoms, how those arrangements will get fixed up to make one nucleus. That is my point of interest. Okay? So you don't have to think that how the silicon and silicon are packing over there because a lot of people are thinking like that. So metallic bonding, what is the meaning of the metallic bonding? So one thing is very clear, if the bonding is very strong, it's very difficult to remove the electron. This is very clear. Okay? So metallic bonding will exist always in the metals. 
that means where, where the bonding is very less. That is why you are getting a plenty number of electrons in the metals. That means very easy to detach the electron from the material. Not from the material, from the atom. Very easily, very less energy is required to detach the electron. That is why at room temperature, the conductor is having plenty number of free electrons. That means this is the weakest Weakest bonding strength. Okay, this is a some type of bonding where the electron will get shared between the two. That means you are having three, I am having five. Just let's share that and try to make the octave. That means each and every atom or each and every nucleus will try to stabilize by making its octave or the full fill or half fill. That means it must have to complete the orbit. Okay, and for that some these type of bondings will arise just to complete the octave. And what is the principle behind that? That is only the bonding namings. Metals means they are just free, a lot of number of electrons are present, so you can choose any one. But here, in most of the time, in the type group fourth element, if you will see, all of are having the four electrons in the outermost cell. And each and every atom will try to make it eight. So better thing is nobody will give four any to any other atom to make the octave. So better thing is share all the electrons. Okay, so here the principle is sharing of the electron. Okay, so this is the moderate weak. That means moderate bonding. But whenever ionic bonding will occur, means ions. After that, ion means that particular atom is becoming ion by stabilizing that. That means the octave will be fixed. After that, you cannot do anything. Any other disturbance is not allowed after becoming the ion. That means this type of bonding will occur only when the ions will get formed. Okay, that means best example is NaCl. What a number Na plus and the Cl minus. That means this particular sodium atom will provide one electron completely and this chlorine atom will take one electron completely and both of them will become ion and they will make a, make a neutral nucleus, the, the new, neutral molecule of one NaCl. That means one sodium chloride nucleus uh, molecule they will make from here. That means here very difficult to detach any electron now. Because octave is complete, so very high energy is required. So this is the strongest bonding. So I know that where the electrons are easily available with huge amount, these type of materials are known as, in terms of electrical properties, that is known as the conductors. Okay, where very difficult to have any free electron is known as insulators. But whose property can be moderated? That means you can change that. Or the number of electron, the bonding is weak. So for lesser energy, you will not get the electron. For higher energy, you will get the electron. Okay, that means here the available number of electron you can change according to the application of the energy. That is why these type of, where the material will have this type of bonding, probably it may possible that that will act as a semiconductor. I'm not saying that all the element which is having the covalent bonding will become a semiconductor. But if that is a semiconductor, definitely the bonding will be covalent. Any, semi any semiconductor will not have the metallic or ionic bonding. All the semiconductor will have the covalent bonding only. Okay, this is what I'm saying. I'm not saying that all the covalent bonding co material will have the semiconductor property. No. But semiconductor bonding always will be a covalent.
Now, <clears throat> so up to now we have studied that we will have any particular solid and this much type of bondings are there. But what will happen if your crystal is not perfect? You are saying that the single crystalline structure you have and if the crystal is not perfect, that means the many a type of imperfection can exist because nothing is ideal. Yes or no? So firstly we will see what are the imperfection can present in the crystal structures. Imperfections. Or the most familiar name is defects. How many type of defects can exist in the crystalline structure? This is my point of interest now. Okay? So, first type of defect which I want to discuss because what is the most popular the crystalline structure? Simple cubic? Yes or no? Then BCC, body centered cubic and face centered cubic. So, I just want to show you something that is why I am taking that structure. This is my one lattice structure. So this is a 3D representation. So one Q will be above this, one Q will be beside this, bottom this, front this, back this and left side of this. Yes or no? But it's very difficult to draw the 3D structure in the right side, left side, top, bottom, front and back. So what is a better representation of this? Better thing is I will take like this. representation of this. So the first type of imperfection can exist because ultimately from where you're getting the silicon, if I'm discussing about the silicon, from where you're getting the silicon, ultimately you're getting the silicon from silica, that means SiO2. So you are saying that whatever the silica you have taken, each and every silica will get deionized. That means you are assuming this SiO2 is becoming total Si plus O2. That means each and every silica will get deionized. Deoxide, not deionized, deoxidized. You are assuming this. That all the oxygen atom will get removed from here and you will get the perfect silicon. Is it possible to have the perfect silicon? That each and every atom of the silica will get deoxidized? No, it is not possible. That we, it may possible that in some, if all the interconnection, I am saying that these are the silicon atoms, these intermediate points are the silicon atoms. So what are the possibility? The first one is that in any one place atom is missing, silicon is not present. Okay? It is a white. Nothing is there. Air bubble. Not completed is crystalline structure. So this type where any one atom is missing, okay, this first type of defect is known as a point defect. where only one position is missing. But here it is upset. That means silicon is not present. Void is there. Okay. And this type of point defect is known as basically a Frankel defect. But you know that in the silica, basically silicon and oxygen both are present. So if any oxygen will replace this, substitute here, the 
the oxygen in place of silicon that means it, if this will be oxygen now in place of silicon then also it is a not a single crystalline structure for me because i have created the defect at this particular point so this type where the void is not there any other atom will get substituted with the host atom that means here the host atom was silicon now the oxygen has replaced that so this type of impurity or defect is known as substitutional defect this is known as substitutional defect okay these are the two type of point defect can exist that means these two are the perfections in the frankel that will be absent any atom will not exist here what is second scenario any other atom will sit here so that type of impurity is known as substitutional defect so these are the two point defects can exist but in most of the time you will ignore this because these things cannot change my electrical properties much if the, the, the size of the device is little bit bigger then this type of defect will not create any problem for you if the device size is very high that means the bigger device you are dealing with each and every perfect will become significant whenever the device size is very less just like is a mosfet that means the channel you cannot afford any type of defects if the those type of defects will exist over there you will be in danger because entire property of the device will change so we'll discuss about this in detail and you will study in detail in your further studies what is the meaning of these defects and what how it will change the effect of the performance now the crystalline structure will look like this that means this array of the electrons are missing this electron array is missing this electron array is missing along the plane only that means along the line if you will see that means in this particular line after this the entire row of array of the electrons are missing here also here also so this type of defect is known as the line defect or if you will see in 3d this will look like as a surface along this surface the atoms are missing so it is also known as surface defect this is known as the point defect okay now whenever i am interested in the volumetric defect that means the mechanical deformation in the structure so definitely if the mechanical deformation is present you will deny to accept that particular crystalline structure you will deny that semiconductor no i don't want this type of fabricate again so if the mechanical disturbance deformation is there that is known as the volumetric crystalline defect which you will never accept for the fabrications mechanical def defects are not acceptable but here what will happen there plenty number of electrons are missing in along the plane so if the number of electrons are not present in the huge amount the conductivity or the electrical properties of the device will get affected much even the size of the device is higher okay so this line defect can alter your electrical properties of that particular device what we are discussing about
Okay, so this is dangerous. So whenever the line defect is present, you have to take care about that. Most of the time, the size of the device is less. That is why you are not accepting this type of defect also. Because this can change your electrical behavior of that particular device. So these type of are also not accepted if the device size is very less.
<clears throat> so now the next thing is firstly I just want to tell you the two type of models by which we will discuss the entire electronic devices okay so the first one is bond model and the second one is band model bond model means we have seen that like this that it is silicon, it is silicon, it is silicon, it is silicon it will share the electron with the four neighbors so whenever you are interested in the bond structures how this electron is getting attached with the neighbors and what will happen if you will provide various situations over here and you want to see all the things with respect to the breaking of the bonds then that is known as the bond model okay so this is basically a qualitative model that means this will tell you the physical situation inside the device how the physical situation is changing if you provide any type of thing that means the carrier concentration will increase or decrease or what why it is increasing what physical phenomena will occur there that is a part of the bond model but whenever you are saying that the value will increase by this much factor what is the performance of the device how you can collect the information that at this particular temperature what will be the number of the electrons or holes so whenever you are interested in the mathematical numbers that is coming from the band model that all of you have studied that like this it is a EC, it is a EV and this is a EG okay so whenever we are discussing with respect to energies how much energy is required to generate the charge carriers that electron will go from here to here and here you will get the free number of electrons and here you will get number of holes okay so whenever you are discussing about the semiconductor with respect to energy that is known as the band model and that is why the information about the energy band diagram is very crucial if you are not familiar with the energy band diagram you cannot deal with the band models okay and here you can guarantee about the number that if you will increase the temperature by this the concentration of the electron or hole will definitely get increased by this factor okay so that is why this is a quantitative model okay this is a quantitative model this is a qualitative model so we have to take care about this okay so my next thing will be firstly the basic information about this because all of you are aware with the bond models you are not aware with the band model so firstly I will tell how energy band diagram will look like this because if I will ask here if the vertical axis is energy what is this x axis plenty number of people will get confused because the x axis is independent here nothing is there in the x axis okay this entire diagram is at any particular lattice constant and these things I will discuss little bit later whenever I will discuss the energy band diagram in detail okay so this much is this much is enough for today